Hello and welcome to our channel, Move Faster with Parkinson's Disease. My name is Luis Sayas. Today we are going to talk, to discuss about a very common phenomenon in Parkinson's disease, uh, drooling. The medical term that we use for drooling is cyloria, which might be correlating with the degree of stiffness and slow movement that you might be having. Um, there are two main factors for people with Parkinson having excessive drooling. Number one, in the same way that Parkinson affect your muscle in your arms and legs, also affect your muscle around your mouth and your throat, causing you to have a swallowing problems and accumulation of saliva in your mouth. Number two, normally we don't think about swallowing. It's a normal reflex. We just swallow and that's it. But in people with Parkinson, they cannot forget to swallow and the saliva get accumulated in the mouth. And because these, they have this abnormal posturing, flex posture, they, the gravity pulls the saliva down. That's why they drool uh, significantly. Uh, I want to make clear that people with Parkinson, they don't have excessive saliva production. Actually, they have the opposite. The problem with people with Parkinson is the two factors that I mentioned before, which are uh, motor dysfunction of the muscle around the mouth and the throat, causing you to have some swallowing problem, and that they forget, uh, kind of forget to swallow a normal reflex that we have. And they actually can need to think about this to swallow, and that's why the saliva get accumulated in the mouth and they have excessive saliva. That's the main two reason for them to have excessive uh, drooling. The other question is, when do you treat this problem? Well, the answer for this is, remember, not every symptom in Parkinson's disease requires treatment. There are some symptoms that they don't require treatment at all because those symptoms are not affecting your function, your life. When the symptom is affecting your life in any way, then is when you have to treat. In the setting of drooling, when it's mild and not affecting your social function, specific, specifically your social function, you don't need to do mostly anything except cleaning your saliva with, with a napkin, and that's it. However, when the symptoms get worse, severe, enough to affect your social function, causing you to have social isolation, leading to depression, that's a reason to treat. The other reason is some patients with Parkinson, they have, uh, when they have excessive saliva um, drooling, they have skin laceration, skin lesion here, leading to skin infection. That's another reason to treat. The other reason is when the, when the drooling is very severe, it might actually increase the chances of you having what we call aspiration pneumonia, which is an infection of the lungs. And guess what? What is the one of the leading cause of death in patients with Parkinson? Aspiration pneumonia. So that's why it's so important to treat those severe cases. Now, the next question is, how do you treat? What to do? Well, again, let me repeat this. If the symptoms are not affecting your life, your function, you don't need to do absolutely nothing except cleaning your saliva around your mouth, and that's it. <clears throat> Some people just use basically um, conservative treatment, conservative treatment, such as you can uh, increase the, the frequency of taking sips uh, of water. Um, so remember that people with Parkinson, they cannot forget uh, to swallow. So you increase the amount of sips of water that might help to decrease the amount of saliva in your mouth. That's one thing. The other thing is also you can um, start chewing more gums. So that might help. Um, then if that doesn't work or the symptoms are worse, then you might try a pill. Which pill? So there is one pill, the name is glycopyrrolate. 
The only time I, I will use glycopyrrolate is uh, when patients, they have excessive drooling, and also at the same time, they have excessive sweating. Um, excessive sweating is a very common phenomenon, non-motor symptom in Parkinson's disease as well. So this medication, glycopyrrolate, cause dry mouth and decrease sweating. So uh, this is a, a, a medication that we can use. And it's pretty safe. Uh, the main side effect that you might have is having uh, exacerbation of your constipation, which is a very common non-motor symptom in Parkinson's disease. So just pay attention to that. Also, it might cause um, nasal congestion and rarely it might cause uh, bladder dysfunction, uh, specifically um, urinary retention. So um, I typically use, if, if I'm going to use this medication, one milligram to two, to two milligrams, usually one milligram twice daily or three times a day. And if that doesn't work, um, then I go to the best treatment, uh, which is a botulinum toxin. Before going to botulinum toxin, let me tell you that some people also use uh, atropine drops, uh, eye atropine uh, drops uh, under the tongue. I typically don't use that, but it's an option that you have. That's another uh, treatment uh, that you can uh, use. Now, in my opinion, um, the best treatment is the use of botulinum toxin injection, botulinum toxin injection, um, like Botox, but mostly I use a uh, myoblock. Myoblock is uh, one of the uh, toxin is actually type B, Botox is type A, Xeomin is type A, so myoblock is type B, which cause uh, more dry mouth, and that's why we tend to use uh, myoblock as our first choice. Um, so in those severe cases, uh, especially when I think that the risk of having aspiration pneumonia increase because of the excessive sal uh, saliva, uh, then I will use a uh, myoblock. So I, 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 I just go directly to uh, myoblock. Myoblock or Botox or Xeomin injections are very easy to perform. It's, they are actually one of the easier procedure in neurology. Very easy, take no more than five minutes uh, to perform this. Uh, take more time to prepare the solution than actually the procedure. Um, very easy. Typically painless, uh, you might feel like a little pinch, uh, especially with the myoblock. When you inject the myoblock, um, you might feel the fluid going inside. So you, you might feel that, that, that sensation. Uh, but it's not a big deal, believe me. Um, let me explain you how we do this. Um, very simple. This is the needle that we use. Very small needle. See, very small needle. This is the syringe. Okay. So, um, very tiny needle that we use. There are two main glands, two main glands. Um, this saliva coming from two main glands. One of them is the parotid glands and the submandibular glands. Uh, almost 90% of the saliva are coming from these two glands. I always start with the parotid gland, which is very easy to reach because it's right here. Uh, how you get this is uh, I, you make an imaginary line from this point here, the angle of the mandible to the tragus, which is here, a line, midpoint, one finger uh, breast uh, here and you inject the first shot and then a little bit below the second one, okay? And then the same thing you do here and here. I inject, uh, if, if I'm using Xeomin, I might use uh, 10 units, uh, 10 units, 10 units, and 10 units. Then um, I see them in six weeks uh, or so, which is most likely the peak or peak effect. I follow up them. Uh, to see if uh, any benefits or not. If there is no significant benefit, I'll go, I go up. But not only I go up in terms of the doses here, I add this one here, which is the main one that produced the baseline 
saliva flow, approximately 65% of the saliva coming from this one, the submandibular gland. Okay, this one is a little bit more difficult to reach because it's right deep here. So how do you get this? So you, again, you make a line from here to here, the angle, right in the midpoint below the, this bone here. This is, this, this is where the gland is located. So for, with this one, if you have an ultrasound, if we have an ultrasound, we use the ultrasound because uh, it might help to localize better the gland but the majority of the time we don't need that okay very easy very effective and again painless um very easy the good news is the majority of the insurance covered this procedure okay so it's approved by fda so the majority of the insurance covered the, this procedure again this is very safe and if you really have excessive saliva, excessive drooling, uh, severe, and you are at risk of having aspiration pneumonia, I think this is the way to go. You need, you need treatment, okay? Um, always try a tiny dose and we go from, and, and then go from there, okay? Thank you very much. See you in the next video.